going, everyone? It's the My Aggie Nation podcast. I'm Travis Brown with the Eagle, MyAggieNation.com, all of the above. Here with the Eagles, Alex Miller. What's up, Alex? It's kind of rainy, but uh, it's cooler weather, and I, I hear Saturday is supposed to be perfect, so we like to hear that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe we should have had Max Crawford on this week to talk about this gross weather, but but we don't have Max Crawford. We have WTAW Zachary Taylor, a little bit more bearded. Yeah, a little bit more bearded, but as you can see, we're going to be having some winds coming in from the northeast, uh, bringing in a lot of rain earlier this week, but watch out. Those clouds are going to clear up just in time for a perfect Saturday at Kyle Field. Love so. it. Oh, oh, look, a dog. Look, Ellie Ellie wants to make her appearance on the My Aggie Nation podcast. Hi, What's Ellie. What's going on, Ellie? Hi, Ellie. I, and she's, uh, she's like, no, I'm good. And she's done. So, yeah, that's what probably a lot of people who listen to this podcast do. Just kind of <laughs> stick their head in and then walk away. Peace. Well, before we lose everybody, let's just go ahead and get into the uh, A&M football scene. It's bye week. Oh, Dallas, now my the other dog is making her appearance here. She's going to stick around, though, like you should for this show. Because we're going to talk about a little bit of Texas A&M football, a little bit of bye week, and a little bit of Auburn game coming up this weekend guys wh- what, what did you do with your bye week and uh how do you think the aggies were doing what, what were they doing on their bye week gearing up for this big auburn game go ahead alex i'll let you start well it sounded like there were a number of aggies that were signing autographs and meeting with fans on saturday last weekend but i, I actually were you there weren't you there were you there i was not abigail okay. was there Gotcha. Um, I was in Austin celebrating uh, one of my good friends' engagement. Uh, ah. Congrats to Andrew and Jordan. But um, we love to celebrate love. Anyway, I, I enjoyed I enjoyed the weekend off. Uh, it was nice. Uh, watch, still watch some football. A little bit of World Series, but you know, it, it's been it's been a grind these these first eight weeks of the season, and uh, I'm I'm sure that the A and M players were glad to get a get a little bit of break uh, especially considering what's ahead of them this november uh pretty pretty challenging slate to close the season yeah isaiah spiller said he got healthy tyree johnson should be available i mean this might be as healthy as a&m has been even even before the first game because they had a couple injuries that popped up before the kent state game i know there's some guys who are out for the season but this is about as healthy as you can expect heading into this auburn game Yeah, uh, I'll I'll take it over from here. Yeah, no, uh, if you look at it, I think it came at just the right time, too, because you look at this final stretch, not saying that that A&M took the last two games off, but, you know, the the starters really got to to rest up that whole fourth quarter uh, pretty much for the South Carolina game. So they kind of got an early start in on the bye week, and I think it came at just the right time because now you've got this late season push against – Arguably, uh, your biggest game's coming up because, yeah, you could say the Alabama game. I don't, I'm still holding off on saying if the Alabama game was kind of a an anomaly or if that was really the true Texas AM team because you can't really judge much based off of Missouri and South Carolina. Yeah, they looked great. They looked really good overall. I think on both sides of the ball, they looked absolutely dominating against South Carolina. But you have to take it with a grain of salt. Now they're going to be playing some really good teams. Ken, is what we saw against Alabama, is that what this year's team is? Or what we saw before that with Mississippi State and Arkansas, is that what this year's team is? And so we're going to find out, I think, a little bit more on Saturday. Yeah, isn't that what these next two games are about? To see if if this A&M team is really the team that went out there and beat Alabama or if that was a one-off anomaly. I I think that this is going to be exactly what that what that is for alex what what kind of do you like in in this matchup what is the thing that you're looking for the most uh between a and m and the tigers yeah you know it, it seems like auburn's getting really healthy on defense and, and the a&m offense is clicking to, right at the right time and so you know with with auburn getting their guys back i mean th- that is a talented defense and so you know, AM's offensive line seems to be gelling right at the right at the right time. You know, Isaiah Spiller mentioned how he's gotten healthy. You know, we've seen him we've seen him kind of jog off the field a couple of times in recent weeks, you know, whether it's a foot or something little, nothing too serious. But, 
you know, how, how's Zane, I'm going to go up against that defense. And, you know, Bonix came in a couple years ago and, and was able to make it work, get a couple big plays. The you, you know, you think about the reverse with Anthony Schwartz. You know, a lot of those guys are gone, but, you know, Tank Bigsby, he, he's a solid back. Uh, that that AM defense, I mean, before they put in their second string, I mean, Travis, you wrote about it after the game. I mean, that was one of the best defensive efforts AM's had in a long time. And so, you know, it, this is a really good Auburn team. Brian Harson's really got it rolling this first year. And so, you know, this is a step up in competition. You know, how does AM rise to the occasion? I am curious, and I know Robert Cessna will break this down a little bit more in our second segment, but I'm really curious to see if those early season uh, troubles with containing a mobile quarterback come back and bite the AM defense again. Because even Kent State's quarterback was able to get out of the pocket a few times and run. Uh, it happened against uh, uh, Arkansas several times early in the season. If they can contain Bo Nix, I think that that will be a hallmark that the, that the defense for sure has taken the next step because yeah you can lump a lot of praise on that defense for the South Carolina game but that South Carolina offense was was pretty terrible and the offensive line was pretty terrible Let, let's see what they can do against another one of these mobile quarterbacks that seem to uh, plague them a little bit Zach what do you think well I, I was gonna say a little bit uh, of what you were saying there and also can they get home on Bo Nix when he's back to dropping back for a pass yes he's a much more mobile quarterback than what they faced here recently. But, you know, you go back to the Mississippi State game, what really hurt them there was they put absolutely zero to no pressure on the QB. Can they put pressure on Bo Nix like they did against Bryce Young, like they have done against the last two quarterbacks they faced? Uh, can they continue that trend, dialing up blitzes and things like that? And then, of course, once they're back there, we've seen Bo Nix has that elusiveness about him. He can squirt right by you and pick up some big yards. I think everybody remembers that game last year where it looked like A&M absolutely had him dead to rights, and somehow, some way, he magically uh, popped out of a hat uh, and popped out of their grasp and then scored a touchdown. So can they keep that from happening on Saturday? Can they get home on him and, frankly, put him on his butt? Um, I think that's what you need to do if you're going to win this ballgame. I think it'll be a huge help that they do have Tyree Johnson back, and that's a guy that I mean, with all the hype coming into the season, you had Michael Clemens, you had DeMarvin Leal, you had uh, a, a whole different slew of guys on that defensive line that you knew were Jaden Peavy that were going to get in and get pressure on the quarterback. I, I think Tyree Johnson was certainly fourth, if not lower, on that list as guys who are just going to be the standout pass rushers this year. And he's pretty much been one of the best, if not the best. Uh, how, how much has he surprised you guys and what he's been able to do so far this season? Yeah, you know, Tyree was a guy uh, that, you know, I, I think I, you nailed it. You know, DeMarvin Leal and Michael Clemens, they get the credit. But this guy is a senior as well. I mean, he's been around the block a few times. We, we've seen how athletic he's been, and he's really risen to the occasion. You know, it kind of reminds me of the year that Miles Garrett really got all the attention, and then Deshaun Hall just went out and had himself a season. I mean, very similar to that where – Guy's just really taking the 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 most of his opportunity getting the start. I mean, we've seen DeMarvin Leal play on the inside quite a bit this season. And, and you know, a really rolled with the – it seems like they've rolled with the mantra of we're going to put our best four out there, uh, even if that means moving DeMarvin Leal inside. And and that's really paid off for a because Leal has that flexibility. And then Tyree Johnson's been really consistent and solid all season. He's shown it game in and game out. Yeah, I think he is, without a doubt, has been the most pleasant surprise other than the advancement of this offensive line as they've gone throughout the year. Uh, you know, I was talking with somebody the other day. Josh Henson deserves a ton of credit. The you were talking to Josh, Josh Henson? No, no. Oh, okay. I was talking about Josh Henson. Uh, no, I was talking about Josh Henson and saying how he really deserves a ton of credit for how this offensive line has progressed, uh, as well as the players. I mean, they're ultimately the guys that are out there, but... Yeah, Tyree Johnson has been a real standout this season, uh, and I think has played himself into into a lot of a uh, lot of talk about the draft. I mean, I don't think he was a guy. Not saying that teams wouldn't have taken a flyer on him, but he was seen or strike you as a as a guy who might sign as an undrafted free agent somewhere. I think he has played himself into a draft position uh, this season. 
Tyree Johnson leading the team in sacks with six, has six tackles for loss. That only is behind Leal Clemens uh, and Aaron Hansford in in uh, tackles for loss. So he's he's certainly, like we said, is having himself a season. Um, so so what are we feeling about this game coming up? I I think that there is the whole um, the whole mojo of of A and M can't win a game against Auburn and Kyle Field. Sorry, I have. Real exciting yawns huh? today. Uh, this is this is like exciting so exciting I'm so excited about this. So pumped up. Well, hey, this is technically my day off. So oh, that's right. I'm, I'm you know it's perfect just, napping weather. Yeah, I'm in yeah, rest yeah, mode. Yeah, yeah. I was supposed to get a round in today, and all of this dreary weather kept me off the course. So anyway, what are we thinking about this game? It's you have the 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 curse of a And M can't beat Auburn at home. Is this the year that they do it? What what are we feeling about this game, Zach? Well, they need to. Uh, I, it might be a question of if they're going to do it, but they need to do it. You know, you've got a, a coach in Jimbo Fisher now in his fourth season. His team is coming in with a lot of momentum. Brian Harson in his first year at, at Auburn. Um, you know, and, and Bo Nix has played tremendous here recently, but gosh, at the beginning of the season, it was it was real touch and go there. Um, but yeah, Jimbo Fisher needs to get this monkey off his back. They finally need to beat Auburn at home. Now, can they do it? That's the big question. Auburn coming in with a whole full head of steam, whereas AM had a full head of steam. They've now had a week off. Have they been able to carry that momentum over the bye? Have they been able to continue that in practice? Um, and, and there's obviously a lot of positives and negatives. If you're on a streak like AM has been, you don't want to slow that down in any way, but with, you can also get healthy and you can rest up. Meanwhile, Auburn was duking it out with Ole Miss. They won pretty handedly there, uh, but at the same time, you're still going up against an SEC opponent, a pretty good one at that. So you take your bumps and bruises along with with uh, with taking on the Rebels. So I think a and has been rested up. They've had two weeks to prepare for this game. Without a doubt, the Aggies should be favored on Saturday. Alex, what do you think? Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm with Zach. You know, it, it, and 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 I've said it I've said it before, and I'll say it again. You know, it, 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 pretty incredible how. A&M's been able to turn things around and, and, you know, they still have a lot to play for. Uh, you know, you, you win these next two games, you know, you're sitting pretty good at eight and two going into Prairie View and uh, that last game of the season at LSU where LSU is kind of in a down year, you know, you need some help, obviously, if you want to compete for a championship, but it's crazy to think that that's not, that's not out of the question yet for, for A&M. And, and it starts this weekend, you know, it, it sounds like there's going to be another great atmosphere at Kyle Field. They just announced that it's going to be a sellout game. You know, CBS is there. There's there's the whole aspect of you never beaten Auburn at home, and and A&M's really found their mojo. You know, and it's and this is a team that really wants to prove itself and prove they're not just a one hit wonder. You know, you, you lost the two to to Arkansas and Mississippi State, but it, but it seems like this is a whole new team now. And so what are they going to do about it? You know, are they, are they going to go out and get another big win or are they just going to revert to, to what, where they were a month ago? And uh, we'll, we'll see just how this, the rest of the season shakes out, but you know, Jimbo Fisher's teams, they, they typically play their best ball in November at, at A&M. And so, you know, we'll see if that trend continues. For sure. For sure. I will give my prediction in the next segment when we talk about that, but I'm, I'm going to throw y'all a curveball. We're going to shift gears a little bit and something we didn't talk about. So if uh, if this curveball goes all the way to the net, my apologies. Um, but AM men's basketball had an exhibition game, played AM Kingsville. It was a, it was a tight one, probably a little closer, three point game, a little closer than they would have expected. But they scored seventy six points, which is more than all of but three games from the entirety of last season. So the offense was clicking. What, what are we thinking about the AM men's basketball team this year? You've got a lot of veteran players. Uh, obviously, Buzz took to the well for the transfer portal after he had a lot of guys. I guess, I guess they him. brought Dr. Pepper, am I right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, no, he, they, they definitely went to the transfer portal and brought in a lot of guys with some experience. Um, it's going to take them a little while to gel, obviously, that you can't expect them to be clicking on all cylinders with that many new faces at the very beginning of the year. All of that being said, it 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 does look like it could be a long year for, for the guys. Now, that's not to say that they can't shape things up. They can't get things squared off. They can't, they can't really come together and start to gel even right before uh, conference play. 
but you look around them, and especially in this league that has gotten so much better, um, the SEC, you know, from top to bottom, really, I feel at this point, has gotten the coaches that they need in place. They've gotten a lot of playmakers that they've had in place. So the conference itself has gotten much better. Um, and you're asking a lot from, from a lot of guys who have not played together and have not played together much uh, to be able to go out there and, and be able to pull some things off. Offensively, yeah, we, Buzz has already talked about it. he's had to change some things up. He's had to change his, his, his game plan. He's trying to work with the personnel that he has instead of making the personnel work to what he puts out there. But can they can they put it together? And you know, you're also talking too. This is this is another year for Buzz Williams. And so far, you know, Aggies were thinking this is this is a guy that we want to lead us to the promised land. He's going to be bringing us some NCAA wins. And so far, has not been the case. You know, granted, last year was a COVID year. Year before that, A and M I think played above expectations in the first season. The third year really is going to tell you a lot. Yeah, yeah, you know. I think Zach nailed it. You know, there's just so many unknowns about this team. There's so many new pieces. The The biggest question is how fast can they come together and start playing as one unit? You know, Tyrese Radford, Marcus Williams, those are guys that, you know, seem to be people that a and high on coming into the season. Obviously, they return Andre Gordon and Quentin Jackson. You know, it, it was kind of concerning looking at the offensive rebounds that a and Kingsville had the other day. But, you know, Henry Coleman didn't play, and he's a guy that I think a and expecting to be a big contributor. And so, yeah, I mean, this is probably the most talented team that Buzz has had since he's gotten here for sure. And, you know, hopefully they don't have to miss a whole month of play this season. And, you know, it, it, could, be one of the, it could be one of those deals where it takes them a while to get going, but it could be like in his first year where – you know, maybe they deal with some growing pains through the non-conference season and they find a way to play their best basketball through conference play, win some games maybe they shouldn't, and, you know, have the shot to make a run at it, whether that's the NIT or maybe even the NCAA tournament, if, if they can put it all together. But, you know, I definitely think that they'll take a step forward from last year. Uh, whether or not they make the postseason, though, that that's to be determined. But they've got a talented team. It's just going to be how can they put it all together and how fast will that happen? I do agree. I think that there is going to be some growing pains. And I do also agree with the fact that I think this is Buzz Williams' most talented team in his three years here, which is surprising considering he had to go completely to uh, the transfer portal. It's going to be it's going to be interesting. It's going to be different. They're going to have to play small because they really don't have a lot of big guys. Uh, and Javante Brown, who, who saw some limited action, didn't look like he was going to be necessarily just a world changer uh, down low. Uh, um, the, the the guy from Arkansas, uh, 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 Henderson, was a great shot blocker, had three blocks. He can have a little bit of a defensive presence down there, but it's going to be a team that tries to go small and works quick. They also started oh, tried to hoist up a lot of threes early in that game, Went started 0 for 7 before finishing, I think, around 28%. Uh, from behind the arc and it very well could be that this is a team that lives and dies by the three they could pull some games out that they probably shouldn't have if they do get hot from behind the arc which is it's going to be a better shooting team um, but it could also be a team that drops a, a, a silly one here or there maybe if they want to rely on that they did a really good job of getting getting it down low getting high percentage shots and and getting fouled at in the kind of middle of the the first half and that's what kind of help keep them in the game. And then late they hit some threes that, that, that certainly helped them out and hit some free throws down the stretch. But I, I, I do think, I mean, it's going to be an improved team from last year. Uh, and I think it's going to be a team that uh, a, a couple of bounces, a couple of made shots here and there could be the difference between a really great season and, and one that probably is, is leave, at least some, some questions to be answered. So it's definitely going to be an interesting season to, to how it plays out and how much Henry Coleman is going to add as well down low in the post game might really uh, uh, do some stuff. It's hard to take a lot from that exhibition game because they were rotating guys in a lot and trying a, diff- a lot of different lineups and trying some different stuff. I'd be curious to see what but Williams normal rotation is going to look like. Cause I think that might solidify things a little bit more, but we'll, we'll just have to see. Uh, we'll close on this. And for this segment, quick thoughts, what's your, what is your hottest take your, your biggest thoughts on the college football playoff polls week one? Oh, yes. I, I'm so glad you asked about that because <laughs> I was hoping we'd get to talk about that. Two things. Okay. One, 
Dallas wants to hear this, by the way. Yeah, I, I, yes, yeah. I'm sure Dallas wants to hear my takes. Okay, one, Alabama at number two. That's really interesting. Uh, and with that being said, is a win over Alabama the best win of the season so far? The other thing I have is Mississippi State at 17 is really interesting, and UTSA is just not even seen. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know how I feel about the Cincinnati stuff, but the, other than that, those are my three big takeaways from this. Uh, you know, it's the first rankings. There's going to be so much that happens. You know, it, it's interesting to see where it starts because this is a good launching pad, and it really sets the tone for where the rankings go from here. But I, there, there's going to be a lot of movement going forward, just given the games that have to be played. I know, Alex, you and I have sat through one of these mock uh, selection processes, and we know that it's, it's, there is some rules, there is some thought processes on what can be discussed and what can't be discussed and what's debated and what isn't debated and how there isn't hypotheticals brought on and all of these different rules. But I think I was a little disappointed in – how much it's in a year where there seemed to be so much parody and anyone could lose to anyone on any given Saturday or Friday or Thursday night or whenever, you know, these games are played that it's kind of still the same cast of characters at the top. It's, it's mostly the, the, the same kind of people all around the top. I was thinking that uh, and lost an Alabama loss to an A&M team who lost to Arkansas and Mississippi state. That would put Arkansas, uh, uh, Alabama out of the uh, top. That That's a completely eye test. They put a lot of weight on the eye test. And I thought because of merits, because of uh, winning, because of how much that people have talked about the the how how lack the much of a lack of parity that there is, that at least in this initial poll that Cincinnati would find their way at, in, at number four in the in the in the top four. Um, and, and then probably find their some find themselves dropping out as the season wore on as they continue to not play anybody. Um, but I at least thought that they would that they would throw them a bone and be in there in this top this first one. Zach, I know you got some some takes. Yeah, um, you know, whenever it comes to Cincinnati and it goes back to what you said, I mean, who they play from here on out, who have they played so far? I think it's pretty obvious that this committee, doesn't reward wins as much as it rewards who you have beaten. Uh, you know, and, and Alex brought up Mississippi State. You look at that rank or where Mississippi State is, and you say, well, this team is five and three, but they've also beaten NC State, who is now ranked in the top 25. They beat Texas A&M, and they beat Kentucky. So when you look at it, they've beaten three teams that are currently in the top 25. I, I think what people need to realize – Two and going back to those early losses, and you talked about using that for an eye test. And I just mentioned some early wins too, but teams change throughout the season. We all know that. Um, AM is obviously not the same team, or at least has not been playing like the same team it was against Arkansas and Mississippi State. That same team was no 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 way, shape, or form going to beat Alabama, and it wouldn't blow out Missouri and South Carolina. So when people say, Oh, well, they Alabama lost to an unranked Texas A&M team. Well, A&M's no longer unranked. A&M's a pretty, pretty good, formidable foe that's going to add to your strength of schedule. Um, for Cincinnati, their entire resume for the CFP rests on Notre Dame. Um, it, it's that win over Notre Dame, nothing else. Their next best win after that was against Central Florida with a first-year head coach who was 5-3 and three right now and, and not in the rankings. So... Everything that Cincinnati, their resume is contingent on Notre Dame. How good is Notre Dame? How big was that win? I think it was a good win. Not everybody's just going to go in. I think Notre Dame is a decent team. I don't think they're ranked 10th, though, because you look at who Notre Dame has beaten. So it's kind of the, um, uh, I guess if you're talking about the food chain, right? So Cincinnati is up here. They're supposed to be the apex predator that, that gobbled up Notre Dame. Well, who has Notre Dame been feeding on? Pretty much plankton at this point. They hadn't been feeding on it. I mean, they beat Wisconsin. They beat Wisconsin, and that's about it. I mean, and, and Wisconsin, I think, is kind of getting a flyer as far as being ranked just because, I mean, they're 5-3, and three and um, they beat Iowa, who I think was vastly overrated as well. So I'm not buying into Notre Dame, and then that means I'm not buying into Cincinnati because Cincinnati doesn't have any other skins on the wall besides the Fighting Irish. So do I think Cincinnati is a good team? Yes. Do I think they're a top four team? No. I think that they're about where they should be. Uh, and 
but but even even you had said they're not going forward nothing in their schedule will help them they can no. beat the the breaks off the rest of the teams that they're going to play this year that's not going to help them maybe smu yeah maybe smu yeah well, and it's, it's, it's kind of hard because they, they the the committee and i know there's there's a lot more arguments on the the the, the rules that the committee has set up contradict themselves a lot and it's hard to say i know the argument is well alabama or insert any team in the top four well they would they blow the wheels off of cincinnati okay well but it, it's supposed to be about the resume and where they are week to week and, and the, the the space for that argument of well if they played heads up right now who would win it, it doesn't necessarily fit in that same formula of well this is where the teams are now and this is how we're going to compare them now. I, I think this week, if you just took the, the, the beginning body of work, I think Cincinnati deserves to be about number four. Because, I mean, if you look at Alabama, the, uh, even though it is one win, Cincinnati's one win over Notre Dame is better than any of Alabama's wins. I know there's more of them, but it's better. Um, so it's just what what metric do you use? And it's convoluted and stupid and I don't like it, and let's just have a 12-team playoff where <laughs> conference well, champions go on, and then we can quibble over over uh, at-large bids. Well, and that's the whole point. I mean, since as it stands, though, Cincinnati's the highest-ranked group of five team to ever be ranked, I think. Is that that's right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so, I mean, that's the whole point of this. Uh, if Cincinnati – if this, this is probably as high as Cincinnati might get unless one of these teams – a couple of these teams start falling. That that's the whole that's the whole point of this. A group of five team is probably never going to make the playoff, and this was the best chance that they that one of them had. Uh, and so that's that's exactly why we're going to a twelve team playoff, and that's exactly why Cincinnati's going to the Big Twelve. Um, and you know, even if SMU had won last week against Houston, Cincinnati is going to play them, and they probably would have played them again in in the AC AAC championship. So, you know, they would have beat them twice and SMU wouldn't have been ranked at the end of the season. So at the end of the day, they were only going to have one uh, win over a top 25 team. Yeah, it's unfortunate because Cincinnati's done really, they've, they've done well and, and they're probably deserving, but that's just how it is. Um, but yeah, I will, one, I will say one other thing though. The committee was very consistent about rewarding head-to-head -head wins. When you look at Oregon ahead of Ohio State, Oklahoma State over Baylor, uh, Mississippi State over Kentucky. That was very consistent. So let's see if they keep that up because uh, because that could have some implications down the line when you're looking at an 11 versus 12 and uh, trying to slot in a New Year's Six team. Yeah, and you talked about Oregon. I mean, they're the remaining of their schedule, uh, even the Pac-12 championship game, I think, nobody's going to be super impressed if they come away with wins right there. Uh, but the fact that they did beat Ohio State at the Horseshoe is huge. Um, it, right now, it is about adding skins to the wall. It is about adding, padding your resume. Uh, hey, if Cincinnati makes the New Year's Six Bowl this year and they blow the, the opposing team out of the water, then we can all be eating crow and say, wow, they really should have been in there. And maybe the, maybe the committee at that point will say, look, we made a mistake. These guys should have been in. But to this point... I mean, they really, to me, have not shown that they belong in that top four. And yeah, Alabama is going to get the benefit of the doubt because it's Alabama. They've been there. They've done that. They've won the championships. Nick Saban is a championship winning coach, and they've got some really, really good talent. So even though they have not played or picked up wins over, say, top 10 teams, the fact that it is Alabama, you're you're obviously going to take that into to consideration. So I... I really think everybody ended up where they should. I like that they put Baylor ahead of Texas A&M. Baylor is 7-1 and one right now. The Aggies obviously 6-2. and two. I think Baylor has the better, better resume. Even though they haven't beaten Alabama, I think that they deserve that number 12 ranking. And, of course, things will come to a head when they host Oklahoma here in a couple of weeks. Uh, that's going to be a, a fantastic game. Um, but, yeah, it is like everything else. It's all going to sort itself out by the end of the year for the most part. There'll still be some teams, I'm sure, that are on the outside looking in that say, hey, we should have been there. But uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a much clearer picture by the end of the season. 
Well, my dog is on the outside looking in of, of this room and is whining at me to stop this. So it's probably a good time to transition into our second segment. And that is where Robert and Cessna and I talk to the guys at the Auburn Opelika News to break down this game even more between the Aggies and the Tigers. So we'll hear a little bit more from them next. <laughs> 